Hey guys, it's Titan, and welcome to a little bit of a Photoshop tutorial. This is a little bit new for me, but I think it's going to be cool. So, uh, main Photoshop thing I've done on my channel has been circleism, digital circleism. Now, I really enjoy this. I, I do it differently than most people do it, um, and the fact that I do a very detailed and small dots instead of lots of big ones, with some smaller ones mixed in. Uh, everybody really does have their own style, though. Uh, but yeah, so, um, let's get right into it. Uh, so, just the way you start off, you just get your photo, and then you take, you just make another layer. This, I don't know if there's any other way to do it out of Photoshop, but you get your second layer up here, and then you, you basically got the two layers you're going to need. <laughs> um, so what you do next is you just double click your background. I'm also using the Photoshop CC uh, from Adobe, so yeah, if, in case you're curious. So I got my picture of me, double click the background, which your picture layer should be, then it's unlocked. Um, just to have it unlocked in case you want to move it around at all. So, uh, first part about this is we gotta get me cut out. So, favorite way probably to do this is just to, uh, take your eraser, use my brackets and go big brush to get some, uh, big parts. Bracket down, smaller brush, get rid of some of the unnecessaries. I'm gonna put the bird in it too. So. Alright, so once we get this cut out, you, you gotta, you just gotta go into detail here. I'm not gonna get it all cut out, but you kinda get the idea. I might cut it all out. <laughs> you never know. Alright, so, you just kind of get it cut out, you know, um, remember if you kind of screw it up, you can always let go and then control Z it, and control Z to go back, to do it again, um, yeah, you just kind of cut out all the stuff here, then you just continue to get smaller and smaller brush until, like, you at this point, then you just gotta follow the eggs really carefully and let go let up every once in a while just in case you cut too far in like if I accidentally did this I'd want to obviously go back uh, so once you get that done what I highly suggest actually I lied there's three layers get one more layer put it all the way at the back here and then just fill that with black all right so you got that going now um, as for cutting it out I think I'm just gonna end up cutting it out uh, I'll kind of show you guys a little more here so uh, whoops, make sure you're on the right layer. That's always the thing you don't want to do. Just be in the wrong layer. Um, I think I maybe cut out a tiny little bit of the bird. I think it's fine for the most part, though. Zoom in here. Get smaller and smaller brush. Until you can get into tiny little spots you want to get cut here. I get rid of. You can also lasso it. I'll show you that too. Another technique to cut it all out. Alright, so I'll show you the lasso really fast here. So, let's just lasso my hand here, alright? So, we got our lasso tool. There's different ways you can do it. You can just hand trace it. Actually, I mean, if you got a good hand, I say go for it. But otherwise, probably not. So then you can just hit the delete backspace and it'll go away. And you got a nice cut, nice smooth cut there. Uh, there's also the polygonal lasso, which you can make straight lines with. If you're a little bit lazier, <laughs> I guess. Um, then you can do the same thing there. Cut that out, you guys get straight lines. Um, and then the last part of it is the magnetic, which is a, can be the most useful at times. Other times it can just be a very big annoyance. So the way you do it, just select a line and you just draw along it and it'll kind of figure it out as you go. Then you get the same thing. Um, that one you might have to do a little extra cleaning up with the eraser tool. Depends. I like to do a little cleaning up because it's not always super smooth. Um, but yeah, those are just some ways you can clean it out. I'm going to finish cutting this out and uh, Try and clean up the glass, or the glare here, and then I'll be back. 
Alright, so I pretty much managed to eliminate all the glare and I cut it out. Like, look at this. I'm so happy. So you can definitely tell it's rough in here. Uh, but I made it look pretty nice. I got rid of most of the glare compared to the original photo, which had a stupid amount of glare on there. But um, as for what I'm going to do with this part, I'm probably just going to end up erasing it because it's clear anyway and you can't really tell. Um, so yeah, now I got my photo here. And now if we're going to start the circles, I'm um, select your brush tool and make sure the opacity is on 100%. Otherwise, it's not going to work. So, uh, make sure your hardness is also on 100%. Now, um, just make sure you select your layer 1, or your top layer. And then you got your, you can use brackets to adjust this, micromanage it. That's what I do. Now, I've done pictures in 10 and 6 bases. Um, that's about what I do. Um, if you want to go bigger, go by all means, go ahead. People go probably like this big for forehead and then it's like, don't do what I just did. But people go pretty big a lot of times. So, um, like, uh, yeah, that's what a lot of people do. But the way I'm going to teach it, it's very small, very high detailed. So something like this, which I mean, if somebody else is doing it, they'd probably do it the same way, but... Um, right now my brush size up here is about 8, I'm using my brackets to adjust it, I'm getting like all the fine lines there, um, actually, hold up, I'm on the wrong layer, make sure you're always on the right layer, otherwise it's not going to turn out well, so, another thing I like to do, if you double click this layer, it just should bring up your layer styles, um, I put a stroke of 1, and I make it white, alright, now actually this does, see? You can see where they're placed. Now, let me actually check something here. I used pencil tool in the last few I did, which might actually be better. I, th I think I like the pencil tool better when I'm doing this, honestly. Uh, you can use either, though. The first one I used the brush tool, I think. I don't remember. Probably. Um, so you basically just go around doing this the entire thing. Uh, follow lines and stuff like I don't know if I have any lines on my forehead in this one. I probably don't I'll check in a moment here What you do Yeah, I don't okay, so like um, I was gonna follow a line like right here on my hand for instance You can see this slightly darker line right here Now I may st when you're doing it right away. It may stand out a little bit like oh, that's just in the middle of nowhere What the heck are you doing? um but in the end, it's probably going to end up blending in really well. Uh, and I suggest when you do this to do like smaller ones right on the outside of it too, to make up the blend a lot nicer um, when you get there. Uh, I'm not going to do the entire thing. That's kind of a basic rundown. But if I was going to like, uh, let's say, so let's do something detailed like the eyes for instance, okay? Normally, I've seen eyes as very highly detailed. Very centers probably don't matter that much because they're black most of the time. I mean, I guess it could be a different color, but... Um, so you got that, and then you... Right now I'm using a size 4. Pixel, 4 pixel dia uh, diameter, yeah. If we come all the way around. Then you just keep going. I normally like to work my way uh, in from the eyes, or in to out. Can't really work in from the eyes, can you? about as far in as you get. <laughs> um, yeah, you do it really detailed though, some things like that. Other things like the forehead, normally I'll just like line the, f I'll line the hairline with like a size 10, and then I'll just keep doing 10s all the way until like I need something more detailed like the eyebrows, um, or the ears. Normally ears I do pretty detailed, or the bird even in this case would be very detailed because it has a lot of small features like these lines. Uh, see actually how small that would be if it'd be even reasonable. Yeah, I'd probably end up doing that, <laughs> doing that in twos, do lines and lines of them. Um, yeah, that's the basic rundown of digital circleism. Uh, here's what they can look like when they're done. I have two of my my two most recent ones up. The third one I've done, I do not have on my I couldn't find on my computer. So, um, yeah, this is one I did. I believe these are all size tens for the most part. Uh, we can test that actually. Yeah, we have the right layer selected, so uh, also, this is, I'll show you why I did the black background, so if you don't have a background, it looks ugly like that, and white's pretty much the exact same. 
So if we were to fill it with white, if we come here, and then paint bucket. See, it looks kind of bad. Um, and hold. Did I not cut that all out? I must not. Oh, I must have put this on the wrong layer. See, that's why you don't do that, guys. Um, no, I wouldn't have done that. I don't know what's up there. Anyway, <clears throat> um, there's one. Here's a much more detailed one. This one's like done all in six. Size six. And this one took me almost ten hours to do. Um, uh, so yeah, that's how you do it. That's a basic rundown. I might complete this in the future. I do not know. But I thank you guys for watching this little tutorial I made. Hope you guys enjoyed it. If you did, remember to hit the like button. That very much be appreciated. I'll see you guys in the next video. Bye-bye.